Hey there, welcome to the channel. Today on Bare Knuckle Binder, I am going to be doing part two of the fuel tank rotisserie. This truck is a prime candidate for a gas tank clean. When I got it, the gas tank was full of varnish from old gas. We removed the fuel tank. We have a temporary tank in the bed. The original fuel tank, when I pulled it out of the bed of the truck, where it had been sitting for 12 years, this thing was full of gallons of rusty, crappy water. So I emptied that out, and now it's time to spin this gas tank. So originally, in the first video, I had mentioned wanting to get a pipe threading machine to run the pipe from the axis of the tank rotisserie and just run it into the chuck of one of those machines and just spin it. However, I haven't been able to put my hands on one of those machines, but I was able to borrow a cement mixer from my friend in Austin. So I brought that up here in Wisconsin, and I'm about to spin this tank all day. So first things first, I have to build some stands for this thing to just sit by itself and run. The jankety saw horses I used in the first video are not going to cut the mustard for this. So I have a transfer case stand that I used for my army truck's transfer case, which no longer has a purpose. So I was going to brace that up and use it for a stand. We're just going to use some scrap and some stuff we have laying around just to make this thing and get it going. So let's get started.
So I've been running this gas tank rotisserie for on and off, uh, you know, a few hours at a time for the last day and a half. Uh, whenever I'm out by the shop, I don't want to leave it unattended too much, but um, I put, you know, nuts and bolts in it. Uh, actually, just nuts and washers, lock washers, random hardware. And I've drained it once and filled it again with water and a stronger concentration of muriatic acid. Now, it's really finally started to clean out. When this, when I started on this tank, it was full of really rusty, crappy water and had so much sediment on the inside that just would not come off. Now, you can see here on the tank how it's getting to be, you know, acid etched clean metal. So on the inside, which has been full of acid for the last couple hours, and you can smell the acid right now outside this tank. You've seen a lot of pinholes along the seam here, which uh, when I coat the tank here, it's gonna take care of a lot of that. Anyway, uh, one thing I wanted to show you is that as this tank cleans up, it doesn't have like a dull sound anymore when it turns. As all the stuff gets off the, the inner walls of the tank, it starts to sound more like a drum. It starts to really be clangy like you're gonna notice a big difference in the sound. So I'm gonna turn it on real quick. Since it's been running like this for a while, it sounds pretty clean on the inside. Yeah, look at that clean metal there. And all these drips along here, along the edge of this, those are from pinhole leaks on the seam, which they probably rusted through and then the acid ate through the, the old rust. Another thing I wanted to point out is these threaded rods, what these are doing is they're acting like spacers to stabilize these, these boards because unlike the other gas tank that these end boards were actually, you know, made for, these ones are flexing a lot more with that, the angle iron on the inside there. And this tank is not exactly square, so when it turns, it was moving a lot. Uh, so I use those and it kind of just use them to push the edges out by putting a nut on each end. Uh, you can see that I moved a little bit on this one, but on the bottom one there, they're still pushing out on that board. Uh, I'm gonna start rinsing this thing out uh, and dumping the disgusting solution that's in this thing right now. Uh, I think I'm going to dump it into a five gallon bucket, a plastic five gallon bucket and take it and dump it on some stumps I'm trying to get rid of. Ah, oh, that brings back memories. So I've got the tank all cleaned out. All this stuff that you see now is flash rust uh, left behind by the acid. So now I'm going to run acetone through it to clean it, and then I am going to line it with cream gas tank liner. By the way, around this tank, I found lots of little holes, some pinholes, lots of pinholes all over it. So sizable enough to be concerned about, but apparently running a couple coats of this cream gas tank liner will seal those up. So let's see how effective it is. I also have this jack stand down here just so I can get the angle of this tank so it runs down to the small end so I get everything covered. All right, so now I've run acetone in this thing for about, I'd say 10 minutes. At this point, I'm just gonna let it dry out. I'm gonna let it air dry with acetone. That's not gonna take too long. And then we're gonna start running the cream in it. What do you think? Yeah? Okay, so I think the acetone is all dried. This here, this is just condensation from the cooling effects of the acetone. So I'm going to close this tank up again and we're about to put cream in there. All right, so I've got the tank closed up. Got the cream here. Now on the directions, it's hard to read, 
but for small tanks, one to five gallons, use one pint. For larger tanks, use one quart per 20 gallons. This is a pint. So this tank is at least 15 to 20 gallons, but it also has those holes in it. So I've got four of these, so I should be good. Turned it all different ways. It looks like it's coated in there. Let me see if I. So, I'm about to drain this out into a funnel and try to keep it. So, you can see how it's leaked up the sides. And you can find all the pinholes have little white dots on them. 